Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. Nuclear fusion is hotting up. It probably won't arrive in time to fix climate change, but could this process that also powers the sun and other stars help solve our future energy needs? Stay with us. The basic function of a nuclear fusion reactor is the combination of two hydrogen nuclei into a single helium atom with slightly less mass than the sum of the two original ones. The lost mass is converted into energy with near-zero carbon emissions and without the dangerous radioactive waste generated by today's nuclear fission reactors. The physics are known and the fuel readily available, so in a world desperate for an abundant source of clean energy... Could nuclear fusion be the solution? Well, physicists have been studying nuclear fusion since the 1950s, but turning it into a controlled energy source has remained frustratingly elusive, although last December, physicists working on fusion claimed a breakthrough. U.S. researchers at the National Ignition Facility announced they had for the first time achieved ignition, that is, a net energy gain from a fusion reaction, though not nearly enough to account for the electricity demand of operating their equipment. In facilities like the Joint European Taurus near Oxford in the UK, scientists are able to heat up plasma to the necessary temperatures, ten times as hot as the core of the sun. But heating the plasma and keeping it confined in the reactor requires energy-intensive magnets, or lasers, that use more energy than the fusion reaction generated. To solve this major engineering challenge and demonstrate the viability of this energy source, in southern France, 35 nations are collaborating to build the world's largest tokamak, an experimental machine designed to harness the energy of fusion. The EU is funding almost half of the total cost of the ITER project, which is set to produce its first plasma in 2025 and start full operation in 2035. Some private companies have also joined in the race and are backing their promises with encouraging progress. But unless there is a major breakthrough, experts agree that fusion energy will be on the grid long after 2050. So, what's stopping it? Well, apart from the major engineering challenges, there are other constraints linked to the availability of raw materials, fuels and skilled workers. Building a fusion reactor requires rare earth elements such as neodymium for the magnets, which is already at very high supply risk. But there's also the fuel issue. Here's Clemens Weikert from the European Parliament's Scientific Foresight Unit. In theory, fusion power plants could be able to breed their own fuel supply. But until then, each of their reactors need tritium, a radioactive form of hydrogen mostly produced by a few nearly obsolete nuclear power plants in Canada. And we'll also be needing people to make it all work. Nuclear engineers, metal workers, electricians, which are still in short supply. And that's not all. Building nuclear fusion plants is very expensive, so that's also something to consider, as well as the necessary regulations. So how can the EU help pave the way for the sector's development? Truth is, Europe is taking a leading role in fusion research worldwide through the ITER project, but also through the Eurotom research and training program, which promotes nuclear research and innovation. With new regulations, such as the Critical Raw Materials Act, the EU also wants to ensure that we can get our hands on elements which are crucial for any fusion reactor, such as lithium and rare earths. Yet, even taking the most optimistic scenario, the hard constraints of tritium supply, construction times and costs, and workers' availability make fusion energy a long-term prospect, although one worth striving for. Want to know more? Check out Antonio Valle and Clemens Weikert's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.